Hey, 1% Nation, you're watching episode 52 of the 1% Engineer Show, and here we have, again, Aaron Shepard on the show as our featured guest. Aaron, say hello to 1% Nation. What's going on, 1% Nation? How's everybody doing? It's a little laggy here. Hopefully this is fine. I'm um, going to try and sort out any of these video problems right now before we really mm -hmm. jump into it. Um, now you, you seem okay. Here we go. Hope it's fine. But uh, anyway, today, guys, we're going to be talking about the Mars generation today on the stream. As you can see from the title, anybody who is uh, just joining us right here as we begin, um, yep, stream is going fine. Um, and what the Mars generation is, is a nonprofit that Aaron and I have joined as student space advisors. Um, we're on the board. Um, I, guess, I guess we're student space ambassador uh, board members. Um, we're going to talk to you all about... Who the Mars Generation is for? What's up, David? We got people in the live chat already. Aaron, I love to see that. Um, oh wow! Yeah. And what we're going to be talking about today is what the Mars Generation is, who it's for. I think all people in STEM, all people who are trying to be involved in either engineering or having a career in space, can be interested in this. Um, and a little bit about how you can have a career as an aspiring astronaut, because that's what this community is for, how you can potentially have a future in space. I think any engineer, even as a civil engineer, not to mention someone like Aaron, who is an electrical engineering master's student doing NASA funded research. So what better way for him to be, uh, hopefully a future astronaut, um, and more guys. So, uh, I encourage anybody to chat it up in the live stream. David, you're the only one with us right now, but I do expect more people to be joining on. So David, thanks again for being here. Um, if you notice any issues with the stream, Aaron, your video is still looking great. Um, I think our audio is looking good, but just point that out. But Aaron, um, for 1% Nation, even though a lot of them know you already, I think since your interview, which was almost <laughs> 25 or 30 episodes ago, we got a little, a little few, yeah. few more members of 1% Nation. Why don't you let us know a little bit about Aaron Shepard. You can go ahead and introduce yourself because we did that for the other episode. And I said all the things that you're involved with. So why don't you uh, give a little shout out to 1% Nation and tell us what you are up to to make it to Mars. Okay, everybody. So like Jake said, my name is Aaron Shepard. I'm an electrical engineering student at Clemson University, and I am currently pursuing my master's. Um, I do research that's funded by NASA. I have always had a passion for space exploration and technology, and so... When I got to Clemson, I found a robotics group that actually develops robots for space. And so um, I'm currently in the process of building a robot that we're going to hopefully use to grab satellites and other space junk while it's in orbit. Because if, in case you haven't seen gravity, the concept of all this extra space junk floating around, that's a very big issue that we're going to have to solve if we want to continue to go out into space and go further and deeper. Um, Beyond my academics, beyond my research, I have the craziest dream, and it's a dream that is truly out of this world. I want to be the first African-American astronaut to walk on another world. That's right, the first. Um, ooh, ooh. <laughs> yeah, for those of you who don't know, only 12 astronauts have walked on another world, and none of them were African-American, none of them were female, and so I want to paved that way for to show the uh, for the next generation to show just the importance of diversity in stem and space exploration and how all of that can help advance us as a society yeah Aaron, awesome and i'm sure that has to be one of your biggest driving factors in getting more involved in the mars generation wanting to be on the board of the student space advisors um just to to be a leader and to show everyone in the world that you don't have to be the stereotypical old white dude to be an aspiring astronaut, right? Right, right, yes. Um, you, it, it's, for me and for a lot of people, there's something about seeing somebody who looks just like you do something that you want to do. And so that's one of the biggest reasons why I work so hard, why I seek these extra opportunities and why I want to establish myself as a leader in both the STEM and the space communities, because I want to show, I want to show everybody, no matter where you're from, um, what you believe and what color your skin is, that you, if you really have a passion and you're willing to work hard, then you can rise to become the top 1% of your field. Nice little plug there. Love that, Aaron. Yep. <laughs> 
Good stuff. Good stuff. So um, I think what we can do really quickly, I want to. I do feel obligated to announce the official mission of the Mars Generation, basically almost off their website. And then I almost want to. We'll steer it. We'll talk a little bit about the things that you guys can be doing to get involved. First of all, we're about to. I guess the Mars Generation turned two years old. Uh, lately, and we're trying to get to a thousand members, a thousand founding members, um, mm -hmm. and the types of people who would be interested in that, I think all of you who are going to be watching this, because all of you are STEM, 1% engineers, this type of thing, but uh, really quickly, I want to just read off the official mission of the Mars Generation, the official mantra of this nonprofit, which I guess we didn't even mention, astronaut Abby and her mom, uh, I think it's Nicole Harrison, who founded this, but... Uh, if you guys know about Astronaut Abby, which I kind of knew about her, um, yeah, David, we're, we're going to space together, man. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, David. I, see, you on, see you on Mars, man. <laughs> I kind of knew about her. Like, I had found her on Instagram, but it was actually during your interview that you kind of, like, cemented my awareness of her and you were like yeah by the way she's like leveraging social media to become super famous and that sort of thing and i'm like yep and then this whole mars generation thing uh, we found out about it but what they're really trying to do is the mission is to excite young people and adults about space and stem education and foster an understanding of the importance of these fields as a future for humankind so of course the, the, the niche, niche target audience is people who, and this is important, not astronauts in training, guys, because that means you're actually within a NASA program. I'm sure Aaron, Aaron can speak to that because I'm sure people confuse you as, as that sort of thing. I'm sure you've been called astronaut in training. And I've seen Abby on videos where she's like, no, not yet. Aspire yeah, astronaut. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah you got to really throw the aspiring in hard because you, you don't want to um, give people the wrong impression and you don't want it to come up during your actual astronaut interviews. Like, well, what about when you were pretending to be an astronaut? <laughs> yeah, yeah. A real astronaut. <laughs> Dude, seriously, it's a big deal because I've heard lots of stories of people who are like about to get their like law degree or about to be a professional engineer and they put the credential in their email signature or something too early. And it's a huge burn. So you definitely need to be official with this stuff. Um, so, so that's what the Mars Generation is all about, guys. That's what the mission is, is really just to encourage people to be interested in outer space and know that we have the technology in place today to almost be sending people to other planets. And that's really what the Mars Generation represents, is that if you're alive today and you're under the age of, let's just say, 40 or 50, uh, you yeah. have a really good chance of, of going to Mars, okay? Um, and that's what we're going to be talking a little bit more about today. So, Aaron, um, why don't we turn this over to you? What do you think of all the engineering, all the STEM type people out there? Um, what are the certain types of things that you can get involved with as either a high school student or a university student? Um, to, to just be more involved, um, maybe if they wanted to get NASA-funded research like you have achieved, which is the reason mm -hmm. why we've connected and why you're on the show. You're the closest thing that I know of as a future astronaut. Um, so let's just talk about that a little bit. Use your knowledge, your experience, and the footsteps that you've taken to maybe talk a little bit about that. Give some advice to 1% Nation. Um, okay, so my advice is to always seek and always ask. Um, I knew when I came into Clemson that I wanted to be involved in NASA work and NASA research. And so I Googled everything that could possibly be related to NASA and Clemson. I think I literally typed NASA Clemson professor research all in a Google search just to see what would pop up. And I got a list of professors who were doing, um, doing space related work within their fields. And I went through all of their pages and I said, okay, which professors do I like? Um, what's what fields do I like? And excuse me, um, I like I said, I've always had this passion for technology and um, computers and robots, and so I decided to take a robotics approach to space exploration because no matter what, if we're sending humans to Mars, if we're sending humans to Venus or wherever, we're probably going to end up sending some kind of robot or some kind of rover before. And so I knew that that would be my doorway into getting my door, my doorway into like the space industry and um, 
just starting my path to becoming more involved with space. And so once I found a professor who was doing robotics and doing space robotics, I contacted them immediately. Um, I just sent out an email saying, hey, I'm coming into Clemson next semester. I really am passionate about these things. I really like your work. Can I come and, can I come and just speak to you and learn more into your, and tour your lab? And the professor said yes. And so I began forging a relationship with this professor. I, I came and toured the lab about six months before I was on campus. And I just kind of made sure to stay in contact over over the time of me waiting to enroll and me enrolling. And then after I spent a semester getting reacclimated, I reached out to that professor again and I said, hey, um, I think I'm ready to do research if you'd be willing to take me. And that professor said, yeah, sure. And so that's how it all started. That's how I got my project. Um, also. I, I didn't stop with just one avenue. Um, one thing that good engineers learn is to approach a problem from multiple ways. And so not only did I get the research that was already space robots, but I found my own funding that was also from NASA. Um, I looked at my state's space grant consortium. So I'm in South Carolina. So I, I think every state has a space grant consortium where you can apply for different grants for space related projects. And I applied and got it. And so now that I have this grant, I, I had funding to do my own research um, within this project that was already space involved. So it, it's a snowball effect. So it's, but the biggest part about the snowball effect is that you have to be the one to initialize it. So you have to find something that is space related. If you're a university student and you're studying STEM, there is more than likely somebody who is going, who is doing something space related where you can join that project. Um, if you're in high school, um, there's usually robotics clubs, there's rocket clubs, there's aerospace clubs. But the biggest thing is to, you have to, you have to initiate everything mm -hmm. and you have to begin to form these relationships because a lot of the space industry is government and it's starting to become more private, but either way, a lot of the space industry is, it, you have to, it's all about who you know, it's about your personal relationships. It's about, well, my professor has done a ton of work for NASA and so he can send me over there for a summer if I, show that I'm capable of doing the work. And then once you go to NASA once, you can go back again, as long as you keep on doing good work and forging good relationships. So um, from definite, I think my advice might be a little bit more aimed towards university students, but I, I feel like it could still apply to high school students as well. It's finding, finding that one way to get involved and starting to get involved and then also forging relationships along the way. It's, it's about who you meet, it's about who knows you, it's about who can, who can advocate for you. So that would be kind of my, those would be kind of my biggest pointers to starting a career in the space industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's funny how much of this types of advice and even just picking up the breadcrumbs of what you've achieved, Aaron, and thank you so much for all that story, which is, is so awesome, but it's it's funny how much of it goes back still to relationship building, advocating yes. for yourself, going out into your engineering, your student, your whatever communities, and building relationships with these people, networking, and really hunting down those opportunities and just like what you mentioned even if you have an existing opportunity that you may think is great you can still go out there and get additional funding from big bodies like nasa and honestly these opportunities are out there waiting for you guys generally people are too afraid to ask and they're self-defeated and they say oh well that will never come for me i'm i'm just a regular guy in yeah. North Carolina, I would never get funding from NASA. I'm sure you had those thoughts, but it's like, no, I'm going to try anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, so and good. and I mean, it, it, the grind never stops. Like I'm, um, so I did the. They funded my research last semester or last summer, and I'm trying to get them to fund it again this summer. And I'm also trying to see if I can intern at a site, whether it be um, the Johnson Space Center in Houston or the Jet Propulsion Lab in California, um, and. I find myself leveraging my personal connections and people within my social networks to say like, hey, does anybody know anybody that could help me with this? And mm -hmm. surprisingly, I, I've, the, I've been responded to with, yes, I know somebody here, let me give them your email. And it, it, that's the way the world works. And it, it doesn't matter what you study. 
if you want to do something, it, it is about advocating it's about advocating for yourself first and then getting others to advocate for you because that's we we live in a world of connection. There, there's nothing there's no way around that. Hundred percent. Asking for that referral, guys, that's really what it's all about. Once that person knows, likes and trusts you, you're gonna be what's up, Des? How you doing, man? Des is uh, over there in Ireland across the pond. It's a little late for you, man. It's like one AM, oh, huh? Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, I've been. I haven't been to Ireland. I've been to the UK though. I really, I like it across the pond. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. Des, right here, we're we're looking at what we believe is going to be the first black astronaut, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's what we're really talking about is the referral thing. Once you have a connection to somebody and they already know you, it's so much easier for them to say, "Oh, well, yeah, of course, I already trust you. I know that you're not going to let me down with this connection." So you can ask for that next opportunity, that next thing. <laughs> Des is funny. Um, but uh, and I also wanted to mention one thing. What you said uh, before I forget is, I have admired this BYU rocket team so much. You mentioned a rocket club or a robotic club or any sort of. Uh, I'm sure there's other like astro and physics clubs and things like this. But like mm -hmm. seriously, those guys are out in Utah in the desert launching ten foot rockets. Yeah. It's like insane. Des says it's one of his dreams to become an astronaut too. Well, on this stream, Des, we we're talking about. Aaron's path to becoming an astronaut, how we are board members of the Student Space Ambassador Program within the Mars Generation, and we're here to basically, mostly from Aaron, talk about how you can become an aspiring astronaut yourself and why we believe you should be getting involved with the Mars Generation. We only need, I think it's like 100 more people to be founding members, which is $25. You get a t-shirt, you get a patch, you get some stickers. I think it's $25 mm -hmm. a year for students. Um, and that's what we're talking about today because we've basically become a part of like the thought leader uh, group. I think there's only 10 of us, right? So, yeah, yeah. That's a really small number. I think it's like 10. Yeah, and since Des is in here, and I'll just go ahead and reveal, sorry to do this to you, Des, but, uh, you know, Des is another member of the um, engineers of, of color community, so I really want to talk about this for a second. What are what are some of the things, Aaron, that you spend time doing? What's up, Adriel? Another 1% another Nation Keystone member. He gave me the best testimonial I have ever received. I'm going to say that about you every time, Adriel. So... <laughs> So, um, Des, I'm going to go ahead and, and connect you with Aaron here specifically because Aaron literally goes out into the community a lot of times. I don't know if these are all like urban schools, but, you know, I'll see you in these environments where you are really trying to connect like high school minority students to these futures mm -hmm. in STEM, these futures in um, space and engineering and everything else. So what are some of the maybe like one or two like key takeaways that you've learned or th some of the things that like really gets these students excited about and so that maybe you can inspire Des to do the same in his communities and encouraging women, encouraging minorities to just be active in this thing that we call STEM. Maybe you can talk a little bit about what's been working for you so far. Um, it's been a couple of things. I, I think it's understanding who you're speaking to, understanding where they come from. Um, I am fortunate enough that I, I, I've I, always had what I needed. My parents could always provide for me. But due to the fact that I am a minority, I do understand the struggles of that. And just being present in front of these kids and telling them, like, hey, this is what I do. I do all these cool things, and you can do all these cool things, too. I also tell them that, hey, you are going to work really hard because I work really hard and probably harder than most college students just because I do I do stuff for school, I do stuff for research, and then I do stuff for the community, and so I'm always all over the place. But when you're just yourself and when you, when you can be something that these kids can actually see, like they can see themselves in your shoes, it's powerful. You can watch, you can literally see it in their eyes when they say, oh my goodness, you did all this. I can do all this too. And I just tell them, yes, like as long as you put in the work and as long as you're willing to learn, yes. So the, the most important thing that I've learned is just to, to learn how to connect with whoever you're speaking to, your audience, and to put yourself to make yourself accessible to them where they think, yes, I can be on that part. I can be on his level too. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that, that's probably my biggest advice. 
Yeah, I think about that a lot. It's like seeing someone that you can envision being very closely connected to yourself and then seeing that they're actually doing it, that they're actually achieving it. Because it's one thing, it's kind of like the, the Bernie Sanders effect where like, yeah, he goes into like, you know, low income communities or minority communities. But to these people, even though he loves them and supports them and all his political policies are aligned with those things, he still looks like an old white man to these people, right? So, right, yeah. So, yeah, I, I can uh, definitely agree with that. This is really good. I want to give a sh quick shout out to AF Math and Engineering, who's in the chat here, guys. It's another civil engineering YouTube platform. Uh, that's Avi and Fred from the University of Toronto, actually, just met, talking about you guys. Um, I've seen a lot of Toronto students and been able to connect to you guys. So thanks for stopping by the, the stream. And Aaron, thanks so much for sort of those insights on your experience going to high schools and inspiring students. This is something that I've actually, um, I'm, I'm happy to say I have a couple speaking engagements scheduled for this fall. One is at my old high school. Yeah, thanks, Des. Des says, you are so inspiring, man. Love that. Um, so Aaron will be able to watch the chat, and the chat will forever be on the YouTube video in the stream because I have it in um, the, the actual stream. But Aaron's probably not watching right now because it is like a 30-second delay. He can't even see me right now, guys. So, you know, Aaron and I, nope. <laughs> Aaron and I have uh, built this relationship where it allows us to just jump on blind and go on YouTube Live and talk to you guys. So I'm really happy about that. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, okay, so let's get back to, you know, the Mars generation and what's going on here. We've already talked about the mission statement. We've already talked about the flagship member of the Mars generation, which is Astronaut Abby. If you don't know about her yet, guys, she's got 130, last time I checked, 130 plus Instagram followers. When Aaron and I, I'm pretty sure she was like at 60 when we did your episode, which was two, two months ago. Uh, she's got over 100,000 Facebook. The Mars Generation Facebook has like 35,000. Um, but she has basically over the last two, three, four years become this rising force in the young aspiring astronaut community. And they started this nonprofit called the Mars Generation two years ago. And it hit its second birthday. I think it was like a week or a week and a half ago. And they have a lot of good things going on this year, like the Student Space Ambassador Program. I don't know if that's – that's not what's at 1,000, right? It's the founding members that's almost at 1,000. I can't keep all yeah, this stuff Yeah, it's the founding members. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, I'm not sure how many student space ambassadors we have, but I think if you are interested in space and you want to be an active member in this community, if you're as long as you're 24 or below, I think you can be a student space ambassador. But regardless, anybody can be a founding member. Anybody can be an advocate. What's up, Adriel? Yeah, I'm not sure. He's talking about the documentary on Netflix. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's, yeah it's her. Is it her? Great. Yeah, it, well, she's – so there – I she's in it. Like, yeah. I know she's in it because she does interviews for it. But, yeah, that's – I. it's kind of like a combination of them and another thing too. But, yeah, yeah. it's a good documentary. Like, I, I really liked it. Yeah, I need to know the story because I saw the Mars Generation documentary as well. Thanks for mentioning that, Adriel. Um but uh, Adriel's over here. He's actually in Toronto. He's actually one of the people who I connected to AF Math and Engineering. Dual citizenship in France. So he was asking me about engineering schools in France. But um, mm -hmm. I looked at that documentary. Yeah, David, what does he say? Oh, just got back from walking the dog. Did you leave the stream on the whole time? That helps the stream if you do that. <laughs> um, anyway, so um, what were we talking about? Talking about how... Uh, the Mars Generation documentary on Netflix, I looked at the branding and it seemed like, I don't know if, if they created a nonprofit after that documentary or if it was like a launch point at the beginning. I don't know the full story. It seems like you know more than me, Aaron. So uh, I will have to get all the tidbits later on, but I'm glad that you guys know about this, about the, uh, the documentary. So... Now that we've talked about the mission, we've talked about what's going on here, if you guys want to be student space ambassadors, if you want to be founding members, if you want to just be advocates of the Mars generation, follow them on social media. I would encourage all of you guys to become founding members because you get this sweet t-shirt, which hasn't come in the mail for me yet, so I got this little little uh, poster up that says Mars Explorers Wanted, and you'll see it on the stream later, Aaron. It's this astronaut like belaying into a crevice that's red. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. I need that. Yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, I think what I also want to talk about a little bit since, you know, Aaron, thank you so much for your insights on things that students can be doing right now today while they're in high school or university to be an aspiring astronaut, you know, how to maybe get some research by some awesome people or just how to advocate for yourself and network. Um, 
I want to talk really quickly because I wrote down the list today about schools that you guys should be looking at in terms of being aspiring astronauts. And what I mean is strong aerospace engineering schools. I'm going to allow Aaron to plug Clemson and his robotics research here. Um, and any other schools, any other, I know there's like specifically aeronautic schools and I'm sure there's like a set amount of schools that are like on this future astronaut list because my list is aerospace engineering. So I'm going to go over this list really quick and then I'm going to turn it over to you, Aaron, to fill in some gaps, fill in with your insights because Aaron, Aaron guys is really the, the future aspiring astronaut. I'm the civil engineer who my biggest goal would be to get on a shuttle to Mars and then build buildings for the colonies, right? I would love that. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah definitely. But let's, let's rip through this list here. Of, these are the, the top 10, and I think there's some ties, so it may not even be exactly 10. It could be more than 10. But here's the top 10 um, schools for aerospace engineering. And I see that there's almost 10 of you guys live here. What we're doing, we're talking about the Mars generation. And anyone who is STEM or engineering at all, you guys have a potential future career on Mars as an engineer or as an aspiring astronaut on Mars, going to Mars. So we're answering questions today. Aaron is basically a future future astronaut, or as we we have to say, aspiring astronaut, right? Yeah, we have to say aspiring. It's in the <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, any questions about what Aaron has done to get his obtain uh, you know a master's position at Clemson for electrical and robotics engineering? Um, get NASA funded research. These are things that he's achieved. So, go ahead and ask any questions for Aaron. I'm going to relay them over. But really quickly, let's go over what are the top ten aerospace engineering programs in the country. This is just for U.S. guys, so we can mm -hmm. talk about outside of the U.S. If you have some inquiries about it, thanks for all the mentions, David. I'll get to your questions in just a second so here's the top 10 number one stanford no surprise <laughs> yeah <laughs> georgia tech i mm -hmm. applied there for grad school did not get in uh mit not surprised caltech yeah. <laughs> i th thought for a second it was cal berkeley but this is caltech um university of michigan ann arbor um adriel good question about canada i bet you the i, I don't know if waterloo or toronto have good schools good uh, aerospace engineering schools, but maybe we'll have you check that for us. So University of Michigan, Ann Arbor, Purdue, I applied there for grad school, Texas A&M, great engineering school, uh, University of Texas at Austin, University of Illinois at Champaign-Urbana, which, excuse me, uh, that's the number one civil engineering school in the country, so their engineering is just mm -hmm. super, super baller. Princeton and then UC Boulder, and I've heard really good things about UC Boulder, all my friends who have gone there. So with that, Aaron, um, what do you think of that list for people who may want to either be aerospace engineers or, or just have a future in STEMI-related astronaut type stuff? And then you can go ahead and talk about how Clemson fits into this sort of bundle. Um, yeah, I think it's it's what you expect historically. Um, if you look at all the astronauts, they tend to come from the ones who are mission specialists and who actually have higher degrees tend to come from those places. Um, mm. I would also like to add, I think there you're starting to see a lot more ACC representation there. Um, there is one astronaut in this previous class, I think Zena Cart Cardman, who uh, she was finishing her PhD at UNC Chapel Hill. Oh, no, no, she went to UNC Chapel Hill, and then she's doing her PhD in Penn State. Mm -hmm. And then um, there, was one PA, there was one astronaut in the last class who went to NC State, so North Carolina State. Um, so you're starting to see a lot of those ACC schools come in. And, of course, I have to do my, my shameless plug for Clemson because we do – we have one of the best engineering programs in the southeastern region, if not the entire country. Just nobody knows yet. So um, hopefully there hasn't been anyone from Clemson to be selected to be an astronaut. So hopefully I can be the first Tiger and really pave the way and show them just how good we are. Because our engineering program is nothing short of phenomenal. Um, but yeah, that list sounds pretty good. Um, it's It sounds typical, of course, Stanford, MIT. Um, Caltech, for those of you who don't know, is actually the Jet Propulsion Lab, which um, it's a NASA site that was started out of Caltech pretty mm. much. So Caltech's going to have a huge aerospace and huge connection into the space industry because uh, JPL is literally right there. Right. Okay. Okay. So this is why I got you on the show, man. I don't know this stuff about the space world, so this is really good. <laughs> Glad you mentioned that. 
Um, David actually has mentioned a couple more schools. I think um, we may have been Googling from the same list because he's got a, a lot of the same ones. Michigan. Michigan. So, guys, I want to talk about Michigan for a second for you Midwesterners out there. Uh, Michigan is a baller engineering school, and one of the things that's been going on in Michigan, aside from you know, Pittsburgh and California, Michigan is very into, because of the Detroit history, is very into car stuff. So, like, it's a it's a think tank for um, solar power car. It's a think tank for driverless vehicles and things like that. So that's why Michigan has been on my radar for engineering. Um, my master's thesis advisor was in grad school at Texas A&M and Texas kind of because of its large size shout out to Fernando Ceballos and Brianne Martin some of my uh, Keystone Texas members I know Aaron has built a relationship with those two but down there in Texas there's so much highway space <laughs> yeah that, uh, it's, it, it's like a, another think tank for like highway engineering and transportation engineering so I've always known about Texas A&M David also mentions Minnesota which you know, going to grad in Wisconsin, I know about Minnesota. Um, I really like the city. Minneapolis is awesome. And that, that um, unlike a lot of campus environments, uh, University of Minnesota is like right downtown, which is awesome. Um, maybe you can, uh, what's the Clemson situation like? You kind of have your own little campus environment there? Yeah, um, so there actually is a city of Clemson, but most of Clemson is the university itself. But um, yeah, there's a nice little downtown. Um, it, outside of downtown, it's kind of kind of quiet, but when you get closer to the heart of campus, it, it becomes hustle and bustle, and you, you start to see a lot more people. Right. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, I've always known of Clemson being super strong and super awesome in general. We had one kid from my high school who went all the way from Maryland, and yeah. I, think I, I think I mentioned to you during your interview, but at that time, I had a friend who was a Clemson grad who had just gotten married, so shout out to that. Uh what else? Uh, somebody, uh, Adriel says, recently got a funny t-shirt that said, it's not rocket science, it's aerospace engineering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's pretty good. Um, okay, guys, so uh, go ahead. There's a couple of us live here, uh, almost 10, as always. Seems to always float, like, you know, just, just below 10. So people do come and go. So what we're doing here, we're talking about how you can have a career that is connected to space, how you can make it to Mars, like Aaron and I are definitely going to be on board um, and why I think it's a good idea for you guys to become a part of the Mars generation. Aaron and I are, are on the board of the Student Space Ambassador, sort of a little program, I guess I'm calling it a little program. Um, and I don't really know what our roles will be as student, base, student Space Ambassador board members besides doing what we're doing right now, advocating <laughs> for the nonprofit. I know I'm going to be making videos for them, which is why I'm like collecting Mars posters and things in the background. Um, but I'm sure it's it's like any other type of leadership thing, just like what you're doing down there naturally, Aaron, just getting people inspired to be in STEM pathways and more so follow in your footsteps and hopefully be a future astronaut, aspiring astronaut. Yeah, um, yeah you have to say aspiring. <laughs> have to say aspiring, yeah, exactly. So uh, we've, we've already talked, if, you, if you're just joining us, guys, um, go ahead and drop any questions about the Mars generation or how you can be an aspiring space and aspiring STEM connected with space professional in your future. Um, and so far, in case you're just joining us, we've already gone over the stepping stones that Aaron has taken to have his NASA-funded research, the things that you can do to have similar results um, what the nonprofit is we've talked about top aerospace engineering schools um, so I have a couple other questions written down here and a lot a lot of this is going to be directed right back to Aaron but you know, Aaron, I've, I've seen lots of cool stuff about how, you know, we're basically there. Like, it's not the technology that's holding us back. It's now, like, the transport thing. You know, the soils mm -hmm. on Mars allow us to do this. The oxygen elements are all there to create a biodome. I'm pretty sure that's what the goal would be, to create a biodome. Um, and then we would build out from there and grow a little ecosystem and, and figure it out from there. But what are some of the technologies and the things you can talk about robotics or whatever you like, but what are some of the technologies or the things that right now are pretty hot topic and pretty awesome that are further enabling us to be having this conversation to have a hopeful Mars future in our lives? Um, so definitely, since I am a robotics guy, you have to talk about the robotic technology, just the fact that we we can develop these systems that can complete all of these crucial tasks 
and they can do it without the need for you air or water or food like humans would need. And so for us, just the fact that we've advanced in computing power, processing power, um, motor development, robotic design, materials design, we can literally send these things before us or we can send these robots before us and pave the way. Um, also, the really big, really big, really, really big technical challenge that everybody's like, yes, we need to work on this. Yes, like this is a lot of people are researching this is just how to deal with the radiation. Um, mm -hmm. um, the fact the fact is, once we leave Earth's atmosphere, we we're pretty much exposed to all the radiation that's floating around in outer space. And back when we went to the moon in 69, it was only a three-day trip, so we didn't have to think about it as much. But now Mars is going to be a minimum seven, seven eight-month trip. So you really have to think about that. Um, we also, I, so people are really working hard to advance on um, different technologies for radiation shielding or even um, medicines that can help protect our DNA integrated by the by the radiation so that's what really got the industry excited and going um also um i think communications just finding because um i'm sorry just finding good communication protocols because mars is so far away that any radio signal that we send out is going to be at least 15 minutes delayed so wow think, oh, yeah it's a it's an interesting challenge and there's not you can't you can't undo that because that's just the laws of physics. But developing these really good communication systems so that way everything that we send is clear and simple and would allow us to complete what we need to complete to survive in Mars. Um, but there, there's just so much technology-wise that got us all excited that we're all working towards. Um, I know SpaceX is building the Falcon Heavy. I know NASA's building the um, SLS, uh, yes, the SLS, and um, all these new exciting technologies are just really, they're really getting us hopeful and antsy. And it, it's its evident, like Jake said, that we're going to be there within the next lifetime. Mm -hmm. The people, I, I'm going to say this, I honestly and truly believe that the first person to walk on Mars has been born. I believe so, without question. I mean... We're, we're planning on sending missions, like, in the next five, six years. I've seen dates that are, like, 2022, 2023, right? Like, yes. Yeah. Oh, my mom's in here again. Hey, mom. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Um, wow, so I really want to talk about this for a second. The 15-minute delay for communication, like, that is incredible. So what are some of the things that we can do with that communication challenge, that communication barrier? That is just insane. And it, because I've, I saw the Martian, right? And that's an exaggerated type of, of communication delay example. But I mean, that 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 engineering challenge re really does exist. So, can you speak to you know how, what we're working on to improve that, or what type of potential emerging technologies exist to to get that delay down? Um. I don't really know if we can get the delay down simply because of physics. Um, remember, um, a light signal or a radio signal is just a form of light, and light can only go at a certain speed. For those of us who do engineering, it's three times ten to the eighth meters per second. Yep. And uh, <laughs> you know, we, we, we all know that. We cold. have to know it. Yeah. Yeah, you have to know it. You have to know it cold. And unfortunately, you just can't go faster than light. Now, what we can do is we can make sure that the signals that we're sending out are of the best quality. So that way, when it does get there, it's right. There's no issues. Um, yep. There's no communication error. Um, I haven't really read too much into what we're doing beyond just making sure that the signals that we are sending are the best that they can be. Mm -hmm. um, if I had to, if you were to ask me, though, in my opinion, I think if we had the money, I would love to see us create kind of an international Mars station. So, like, we have the ISS that's orbiting Earth right now, right? And then I, I think it'd be really cool. And I think actually, um, Lockheed and Martin showed designs for this. It, it came up a couple years ago, and I, I think they're still in the works of it. But essentially, it's a space station that's orbiting Mars. 
and you would put people on the space station. You would um, put supplies, communication, um, equipment, all that. And for the humans that are already down on Mars, instead of having to wait on information from, or, or from, instead of having to wait for information to travel from Earth to Mars, if you had people that were orbiting Mars who already knew, like, okay, this is what you need to do, this is what you need to watch out for, and say the astronauts on Mars were doing some kind of mission, an EVA or an extra extravehicular activity where they're outside of their habitat and they have to complete a task. Well, instead of trying to communicate with Earth, they can just communicate with the station that's orbiting them, and essentially there's no delay because you're close enough. Hmm, wow. um, so, I, I, and now that I am speaking about it, I do remember I've seen the concept for that from, I believe it was Lockheed and Martin. So I, I think that would be really cool. It would be really cool to see that. Um, now, whether or not we actually see that, that's an issue of funding and a whole bunch of other things that are beyond the control of science. It goes more into the realm of politics, but still it, it's a wonderful opportunity or it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful solution to that problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is really good. Yeah. Love this. Uh, by the way, my mom says that you have an awesome looking bow tie. <laughs> yes. Thank, and, you. Uh, yes sir. thank you. She must know that you've been on the show before just cause she watches my stuff, but she says, you know, you're so inspiring and wonderful to be on the show. So, oh, so I said, thank you. <laughs> a little man that mentioned for mom. Uh, but, uh, David's also talking about how he's interested in doing the Mars generation. Hopefully he can scrape together the 25 bucks. That's awesome. Even if you can't, um, just following the Mars generation on social media, being an advocate for it. Yep. Mom's in here. <laughs> um, <laughs> And, and just being aware that this movement exists. For example, let me give you a good example. So um, I'm also in, in TEDx, the TEDx group here in Wilmington, Delaware. And we've had 275 speakers over the last six years, six annual events. And this year we had 12 events. So you know, we really have the chops to know what a good TEDx talk is and we're always looking at getting bigger and bigger and people and awesome topics. We had Valerie Biden Owens, the uh, sister and campaign manager of Joe Biden do a, a talk last month and we've had a lot of people from all over the world and we went, we had TEDx Global Day this weekend. We went around the room as an organizer team, it's like 23 of us, but there's really like the core five, six, seven people that I've become a part of. And we're supposed to talk about what we would say, what we would do as a TEDx talk today. What do you think I talk about? Everybody else is talking about STEM and, and other types of things. And I'm like, you know, if I was going to talk do a TEDx talk today, it would be this. It would, it would be about the Mars generation. And it would be about how all the people alive today, all of you in this room, if you want, you can probably wrap up your life on Mars if you choose. So <laughs> even if you, David, even if you, you can't, officially become a founding member just knowing that this these truths scientifically are the case or hope hopefully scientifically i mean i believe that it can be be true um but just knowing about this and being an advocate for this movement that's that's pretty good too so um with that uh i don't know if you want to mention anything else about you know space advocacy and aspiring astronaut advocacy aaron um yes yeah, so i'm um, actually the Mars generation, we will do a whole bunch of events throughout the year. The really big one last year that I saw was Train Like a Martian. And it's a huge event. Um, it goes all over social media where you're doing a physical activity and you're posting it. And the point is that in order to be an astronaut, you have to be a healthy person. And so we're not only promoting STEM in space, but also personal health. And with that, everybody can get involved. There's a contest. So They'll, they'll say like, hey, you have to do this thing and submit a video of yourself doing it and send it to social media. And um, that gives the public a chance to be involved too. Um, and throughout the year, I, I know that there will be more opportunities from us as the Mars generation for everybody to get involved and for everybody to join us and to share their passions for STEM and space exploration and to advocate for it publicly. So um, they're definitely, I, even if you can't scrape together the 25 bucks, David, I totally understand. I'm, I'm a student. I'm broke too. Um, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. We all know those struggles, but even if you can't scrape together those 25 bucks to officially join, just following us and 
joining in our activities or even even just as simple as talking to your friends about us or retweeting us or sharing what we share, it, it, it all helps. Because at the end of the day, the goal of the Mars generation is to get the public excited about Mars. It's to, it's to, let the, it's to get the public to say, yes, we really can do this. Um, mm-hmm. It's one thing I really, I've really been thinking about for a long time. Um, you guys remember... Well, none of us were alive. I wasn't alive. Some, somebody might have been. But during the Apollo era, what happened? John F. Kennedy said, we're going to be on the moon by the end of the decade. And we were on the moon by the end of the decade. And that's because the public really wanted it. Yep. So if we want Mars, if you really want to see that happen, we as a public have to demand that. Mm-hmm. And so the point of us as the Mars generation is to help the public, to give the public that voice to say, yes, we want to go go to Mars, send us to Mars. I love that. And if, I don't remember if I'm quoting someone else, but I've heard this enough that maybe I'll just make my own quote here, but you become what you believe. And if, if, you, if we really want to make it, if we want to go, if we want to make this a reality, just like going to the moon, we're going we're gonna to make it to Mars, guys. And the more we're talking about it, the more that we're socially accepting it, the more that we're believing that this is really going to happen, it's just going to happen. Um, and, with, and with that being said, uh, it's really awesome, Aaron. You're talking about, you know, if you can't really, we both mentioned this, but uh, you, you really uh, hammered it home. Um, you know, if you, if you can't become a part of the, the nonprofit, th- that's okay. But even minor things like sharing information on social media, retweeting, reposting, sharing something on Facebook, that goes so far in terms of scalability. Because if one person has 100 followers and then they just have... 10 friends who each have 100 followers, right? You've 10x your ability to reach people. So, so that's a pretty good thing. And with that being said, I do want to talk a little bit about personal brand and how well Aaron has positioned himself to be in the footsteps of an astronaut Abby type person and, and that people know you as an aspiring astronaut, right? There's no misconception. You have your own website for it, which I haven't even made a video episode about that yet, but I plan to because I think that's hugely important. Um, yeah. <laughs> but really aligning all of your social media to be about what you want your future, what you want your career to be all about. And if that is outer space, which the topic of this episode is, this video is all about that. If you want it to just be about engineering mentorship, which is me, and helping coaching engineers become the top 1% of their career, that's it. Uh, if you want to be robotics, if you want to be biomed, like Hamza, who's not in the stream, but he's a part, big part of 1% Nation. But whatever it is, brand yourself so that just like when you go show up to a website or a social media page from some company or some agency or a nonprofit like the Mars Generation, they know exactly what you represent as a person. So, Aaron, with that, with that sort of intro or segue back into you, let's talk a little bit about your own personal branding and what you would encourage the Mars generation and members of 1% Nation who are watching, how they can better announce what they want for their future just by posting things day to day. Um, if you're well, that's, that's kind of, that's kind of just what I've done. Um, I actually remember because for the longest time I was struggling to find an identity and find a brand and I was going through this process and I went through about four or five different handles and finally you you have to think about it, you have to constantly work at it, but when you hit the one that works, you know that that's your identity. And so when I started going under the handle Space Cadet Shep, it, it, just, it just stuck with me and it was something that I felt good about and I felt that it was it would be a handle that people would remember and from there i just started posting daily i'm i don't post daily anymore just because of time but i i started posting frequently about a certain topic so i would post about stem um diversity in stem robotics and space and as i was posting about those topics i was looking for people who were posting the same things and I was connecting with them and just building a network and um, I was just always looking for opportunities to present myself out there and I came across this contest that was the student astronaut contest and that's actually how Jake and I met yep. because he saw a video for it. <laughs> that's how I found you, yeah. 
Yeah, and <laughs> even though I didn't win the contest, it's still, just from the exposure standpoint, that really put me out there. That connected me with Jake. It connected me with STEM Media. It connected me with a whole bunch of other people who don't necessarily want the same things that I want. Like, Jake doesn't want to be the first black astronaut on Mars, hopefully. Um, <laughs> but he wants he wants to do engineering mentorship, and I want to be an astronaut, but I also want to work in engineering and inspiring others to follow engineering and diversifying engineering. So that was just a common bond. And over time, even you're going to meet people who, even though you guys don't necessarily align exactly, there's so much in common and there's so much that you can learn. And if you look at any website on or any web article on how to launch a successful blog or a website or a YouTube channel, the biggest thing is relationships. Mm -hmm. And as once you find your niche, like by uh, creating relationships with other people who are around your niche and just that that's how that's how social media works. It's it's all about relationships and connections. Mm -hmm. Wow, so you didn't know Nehemiah before your video contest submission? I, if I did, I didn't know him like I know him now. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Um, have you guys met in person yet? No, I haven't. He's right. He's one state up above me. I need to go meet him one day. Yeah, yeah. I guess you're South Carolina. I think I misspoke earlier and said North Carolina. You probably caught it and didn't correct me, which is fine. <laughs> Um, cause I know he's in the, he's in the NC state area, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's what um, I thought. yeah. Um, but again, and so, he, and he, and one thing that I always tell people is that if you're really trying and you're sincere and you're good in your intentions, people will notice that and people will help you. Um, mm -hmm. like Nehemiah has called me and he's offered, he's offered a lot of advice and he's given me he's just helped mentor me throughout this process and so ha so has jake i mean like that's just the way no matter what you're trying to do whether it's be an engineer establish yourself as a youtube star um do a little bit of both become an astronaut it's all about the connections that you make along the way because everybody's smart everybody can you can learn equations you can learn math you can learn how to build things but you can't necessarily you can't do it all by yourself. Like you're going to need help from somebody along the way. Mm -hmm. um, the and I, I, I know I'm kind of rambling, and I'm sorry, but um, I saw that when I was actually at NASA this summer, where you see all these people that go into our space program. It's not just the astronauts. There's hundreds of thousands of other people who are helping along the way. So you can't do it by yourself. 100%, 100%. And Adriel is going, coming into the chat harmonizing exactly with you, saying believe in yourself and know that you have the tools to network and find people along the way who are going to help you. And this has been my biggest, one of my biggest tips to everyone that I talk to, everyone that I touch in my life, is that you have to ask for help. Because as long as you're leading with that authenticity and that genuineness, just like what Aaron is talking about, people recognize that. People see that, that you're on this path to the pursuit of your dreams, and people actually want to help you. So don't be afraid to reach out. And just like what Aaron has mentioned, that these people who he's connected with and he's – you know, they've, they've found each other on their past to whatever they're trying to do to make a better world. And they help each other along the way. And it really is a special thing. And a lot of people are afraid to ask for advice. They're afraid to ask for someone to be their mentor or even to just have cup, a cup of coffee together for 30 minutes and pick their brain or something. But that person is – but most commonly, particularly if you lead with authenticity and genuineness, they are there to help you back. So I'm really happy you mentioned this, Aaron. This is really good. Um and I want to go back to this personal branding and you kind of, we've kind of evolved it to be like a personal branding into social media and then you never really know what, who you're going to meet through putting out content, which is kind of like its own conversation, but that's really what personal branding is. You're, you're doing Instagram posts or Facebook posts or whatever about a certain niche that you believe is the one that is your destiny. Um, and I'm aware of your time, by the way, Aaron, because we've been streaming now for 60, oh, I guess the stream has been live for 54 minutes we've been we've been uh on here for like 10 minutes more but um what i want to talk about is 
maybe you can you can boil it down to one or two examples or just one if you want and I'm pretty sure I asked you this um, in our interview before I, actually I know that I did but I think let's let's have this be a social media type answer but if you're putting yourself out there following your dreams be the first black astronaut asp- first black aspiring astronaut um, and you know you're building relationships with these people who you're gonna meet along your path maybe let's talk about one example and you can't use me <laughs> one example of, of someone or an opportunity or something a connection that that started from social media and started from building your personal brand and telling your story of going to outer space and you officially being a part of the Mars generation because you want to make it to Mars. Let's talk about maybe one one opportunity, connection, relationship, or something that came through just being active on social media. Oh yeah, I can tell you one right now that's in the process that I hope works out. Um, so Brienne Martin, who we both know, um, yep. she is she's labeled herself as the people engineer. She's a wonderful person. I've never met her in real life, but I follow her on social media. She follows me. Um, and actually, this is a combination of a few. I so my goal this summer I don't know if I mentioned it earlier in the stream is to actually now that I've done the NASA funded research at home at Clemson I want to go to their labs and I want to work in their facilities and so I want to officially intern at a NASA site Um, and I knew that I wanted to do that and so I I posted a question about Johnson Space Center's Pathways program mm-hmm. to the STEM Media Facebook group. And within, I think, an hour, I get a response, and it's Brienne, and she's like, yeah, I know somebody at Johnson Space Center who does, I think it's it's recruiting for minority students for their internship program. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no way. And that, and so, I began to go through that process. Um, a couple days later, I got a message saying, hey, can you give me your email? And I said, yeah, so I gave her my email. And everything is still playing out now, but right. if it works out to where I land that internship or something close to that, then that was purely just leveraging on social social media. And that was just using your connections and reaching out to people that you reaching out to people who see what you do and who recognize what you do and who are willing to help you. 100%. I'm really happy you mentioned this about Brienne because I didn't realize, I, I feel like I remember seeing that conversation on the Facebook group because that's in the STEM Creatives Facebook group, I'm pretty sure. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, wow, that's awesome. She just has connections everywhere. It's through, yeah, through yeah. her people engineer tentacles and her involvement with SHIP, which is the Society for Hispanic Professional Engineers, which she, I'm pretty sure, is like her district president or sorry, regional president, which is like yeah. seven states. So she's a boss. I'm really happy to hear about that. And it's funny, too. I know we mentioned this already, but like you and I, we met on Instagram. Where did I meet Brienne? Instagram. Where did I meet Nehemiah? Instagram, you know. And and now I'm kind of like I'm I'm chilling. I've been chilling on the DMs a little bit, but uh, (laughs) I, I am just kind of letting this stuff organically happen where it actually I don't really need to 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 work very hard at that anymore because like. You know, Ash Norton, shout out to you. Um, she's got me in this Facebook group that's a, it's got a thousand engineers. I need to invite you, Aaron. Um, it's, yeah, yeah. It's called ESRG, Engineering Student and Recent Graduates, and it was created by an engineer named Thomas. Sorry, Thomas, I can't remember your last name. Um, huh. But uh, it's like her little Cincinnati type tribe. I'm pretty sure Thomas is in the Cincinnati area. But um, just what, what happens is once you meet one person, it leads to another, it leads to another, and then you never know. All of a sudden, you're getting, like, you know, connections to Johnson Space Center, <laughs> right? And it's like, oh, yeah. man. So, you know, this is why you really, you guys, you got to put yourself out there. you got to create a personal brand for yourself and your own 1% engineer or your own Mars Generation Road or, in Aaron's case, you know, literally – being the first aspiring black astronaut, um, <laughs> it always makes me laugh to, to force myself to say aspiring. Because <laughs> like we got, yeah, right. right? Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm I'm such a big proponent of this today, guys. Is that you know starting that blog, starting that personal brand, putting that content out because you're basically creating like this radio signal. 
right? That's like, this is me, this is what I believe in, this is what I want to happen in my career. And it's kind of like you are enabling yourself to meet people who are on a similar path or who will help you on this path and things like this. You actually never have a clue who you're gonna meet. But like, if you, I see so many engineers who I know how active they're like versions of you or I, but you go to their Instagram and it's like, you know, their cat. It's like, come on. like. You're, yeah. you're way more interesting of a person. You have so much more to share with the world. Don't be afraid, you know, to show your true colors. And uh, I'm super aware of your time, Aaron. We've been streaming here live for almost an hour. Um, and we do, we've always had seven, eight, nine, almost 10 people in this live stream at any given time, which in my experience is kind of normal. People come and go. So if you're still in the chat right now and you're paying attention, go ahead and load it up and say what's up so I can give you a final shout out about you guys being in here and being hopefully future members and founding members of the Mars Generation, clearly advocates of Aaron's. You know, I have the his Facebook and his Instagram in the stream right there um, so you guys know where that is. Go over and follow him on Instagram since main platform and also Facebook. Um, and you can go ahead. I think your website is spacecadetship.com. Is that right? Yeah, uh, right. yeah. I need to update it, so it might. It's going to get updated soon. I promise. <laughs> and uh, shout out to you, Adriel, for being in the stream. He's coming in and saying the top five aeronautical engineering universities in Canada are University of Montreal, uh, McMaster, Toronto, UBC, and McGill. And I just had a McGill graduate on the show. Um, hmm. That was Jessica Drusco. She's a stemin, stemin She's a little YouTuber, kind of just just getting started. Um, but I need to connect you guys as well, Aaron, because she also uh, she's a combustion engineer. So she's doing her her um, <laughs> masters of engineering in at a ETH Zurich in Switzerland. So she's a Canadian across hmm. the pond now. Um, but she basically is kind of doing like kind of aerospace bridge into mechanical so uh, i need to connect you guys and you guys need to know about each other because there's not too many of us out there that are like engineers doing this whole personal brand content creation thing i mean honestly it's like me you <laughs> nehemiah Brienne, uh <laughs> jess does it do, mm -hmm. do we do we know of any other like Relatively Ash, prominent. Ash, Norton, Ash Norton. She's got yeah. her uh, her her sort of like uh, mantra is engineers with impact. Um, so I don't know. Did you already know Ash before me, Aaron? Uh, I I think I might have met her through you. It did might have been around the same time. I at this point I, it's hard to keep up because everything is so everything is so connected. I was like I, I it's hard to remember like who did I meet in what order, but right. Yeah, um, it's so funny because she actually, um, it was a couple months ago, she tagged me one day and her daughter had, she, her daughter had bought a... Oh, yeah. Suit. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. And so she was pointing to parts of the spacesuit. It was the control panel and um, the lines for like the heating and cooling system. And she's like, what's that? And so I gave, you know, at first I was going to... At first, I was going to say, oh, it's just this. But then I, I turned it into this long post where I was like, yeah, it's this and this. And so imagine that your daughter is she is finally up in the ISS and she just got assigned her first CVA and it's getting a little hot because she's crossing she's crossing over the sun right now. But then it's going to get cold because you're going to go to the dark side of the planet in about 90 minutes. So she has to play with her temperature in her suit to make sure that she's not too hot or not too cold. It was it was a really fun day. That's awesome, yeah. Yeah, I do remember that. She put that on Instagram. It looks so cute. Yeah, That's it awesome. was Yeah, I kinda want that I kinda want that spacesuit. Like not not gonna lie. Buy it. <laughs> well um, I thought about um I thought about diving in a spacesuit. Like well in like a spacesuit costume and just putting it over my scuba gear. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Shout out to you, mom, for being in the chat. I'm glad you've been watching. Shout out to you, Hamza. Give Hamza a nice little shout out. Hamza, I heard lately that people have been reading your Biomed Mondays series. I got a couple actually testimonials about you and the content that you've been helping me produce from One Percent Nation. Um, Hamza uh, just went to a hackathon. He's also in the um, I guess it's Charlotte, NC State ish area in North Carolina. So again, Hamza, if you don't know Aaron, you guys need to know each other. Um, Hamza, yes, what he's sir. what he's doing right now, he's going to Wake Community College for some precursor engineering courses and then planning to transfer to either NC State or UNC Chapel Hill for biomedical engineering. Um, and mm -hmm. he lately went to this awesome event that was, I'm pretty sure, yeah, Hamza, he's in North Carolina. So 
you need to meet Aaron. You need to meet um, Nehemiah as well. But uh, Hamza recently went to – oh, he must be saying, oh, really, about his blog. Yeah, of course, man. They love your stuff. Die Medical Mondays <laughs> is such a cool idea. Um, so anyway, uh, he lately went to a hackathon at Duke – and then went to a job fair at NC State. And even if I got those mixed around in order, which I don't think I did, um, it, it's, it's fine. But he's going to type up a little summary about that, and that'll probably be a 1% engineer episode. Um, but with that being said, are there any like big flagship STEM or sort of this type of STEM empowerment conferences that are going down either down by you in South – because Clemson is South Carolina, right? Or anything yes. anything else in that region of the world that's going on that you know Hamza should know about or that I should make the trek down for or something like this? Um, I am not aware of that at the moment, but I will keep my eyes open and let okay. you know so that way you can share it with the rest of 1% Nation. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. And with that being said, I don't want you know the last couple streams I've been doing have been like two hours long. Um, so you know, Aaron, you're a busy guy. Look at him, looking all dapper with that bow tie, guys. Look at him. Doesn't he look so busy? I know he's busy. So I'll let you let you get off to your wife. Um, but uh, it, you know, if you have any um, or like a, a final message to One Percent Nation about people who want to be aspiring astronauts or anything like this, um, go ahead and mention that. Or if you want any other you know, call, connection to you, call to action to you. We can mention your website again, but let's. I'd love to hear Aaron final little words of wisdom about being an aspiring astronaut. How people can connect to you, and then if you have any other words about the Mars generation, and then we'll then we'll say goodbye. Okay. Um, so again, I, I mentioned this earlier in the stream, but it's something that I've been really thinking about ever since I became a part of the Mars generation. But. Um, we didn't get to the moon until we demanded that we did. And once we had that initial demand, we did whatever work was necessary to land human beings on the moon. And so no matter what your dream is, if it's to be an astronaut, if it's to run your own business, if it's to become this huge YouTube social media mo uh, business model, then you have to first demand it from yourself. And once you demand it from yourself, you gotta that that means you gotta put in the work. But then, if you're demanding it from yourself and you're putting in the work and you're authentic about it, people will see and people will come and help you along your way. So it, but it's all about that internal, that 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 internal resolve to say I'm gonna do this, and if I don't do it, I'm gonna do everything I can to say that I tried everything I can to make sure that it's done. Um. Yeah, that's kind of all I have to say. Hundred <laughs> percent. No, I love that. And the the biggest little tidbit, it's really like the tip of the iceberg that you mentioned there, is that you guys got to put in the work, though. You know, and oh, yeah. it's it's that ambition. It's it's that sort of it, it almost becomes uh, what's the term? Um, contagious. Where you know when people see that you're doing it, that's going to be the precursor to them wanting to help you and wanting to be there to guide you along or team up with you or whatever. But you know, to, to be successful in life or to make it to Mars or to become an engineer or anything like this or have a degree in STEM, it is a lot of work, guys. And that's why you have to look inside yourself and know that that's the, the destiny for you. And once you can recognize that and you have that passion, that work becomes easy. And then you can follow your dreams. You can be an aspiring astronaut. You can be an engineer. You can change the world. And that's what Aaron and I are here to do is to communicate that message to all the young stemmers of the world. That's why we are board members for the Student Space Ambassador Program within the Mars Generation. That's why we're becoming advocates for it because if there's any way for us to scale our voice and scale our message and just help as many young people out there as possible, this is why Aaron volunteers at high schools. This is why we have personal brands around engineering. And of course, again, guys, this is why we're doing this little show for the Mars Generation today. So thank you so much, Aaron. I want to give a big shout out to you, Space Cadet Ship, my main man, yeah. for being the first second guest on the 1% <laughs> yeah. show. So I really appreciate that. I'm pretty sure that episode was like 26 or 28 or something like that. And here we are at 52. Oh, yeah. 52, wow. ramping it up. And we crossed it. Yeah, I know, right? Across a thousand subscribers here lately, we're here at eleven hundred, and uh, we still don't have a one percent engineer of the month for September. I'm having people submit little videos. See you, Adriel. Go ahead and submit a video for one percent engineer of the month. <laughs> yes, um, do it, Adriel. <laughs> yeah, you should do it. You can actually could be a high candidate because we built a good relationship. You should see this testimonial he gave me, man. So good. 
Um, he, w- he said he wants to be part of the point zero 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 one percent. I was like, what? Oh, whoa, he's <laughs> overachieving. Like, whoa, that's that's overachieving right there. Yeah. Hold up now. Yeah, exactly right. So, guys, thanks so much for being part of this stream. If you hung out with us this time or up until this point, thank you so much. So I want to give, again, a big final shout out to the Mars Generation. Go ahead and follow them. They're the Mars Generation on Instagram and Facebook. Go visit their website. I think it's themarsgeneration.org slash members. If you want to be a founding member and join Aaron and I on this mission to support this nonprofit and encourage as many young and adult people to have an interest in space, have an interest in STEM in general. And please, guys, follow Aaron. He is Space Cadet Shep on Instagram and Facebook. Go ahead and check out his website look at the, all the stuff that he's doing being awesome and uh most of you are friends with me on facebook connect with me it's just jake Ward. i'll get you in the facebook groups with one percent nation and maybe show you some other stuff about the mars generation or whatever so with all that being said aaron thank you so much for being our second featured guest on the one percent engineer show um thank you, you yes thanks for you, having me yeah no problem if you have anything else go ahead and uh throw it in otherwise we can say goodbye <laughs> I uh, let's see what else can I say just do the work and people will see it along the way 100% thanks so much Aaron see you 1% nation see you Mars generation bye 1% nation bye Mars generation